Edward Cherry, who is an architect who has helped us with all of our tours, pointing out the important sites to the history of the African American community in New Haven. Ed is going to talk about his connection to Sally Wilson and the Arzen Street School, which is no longer standing, but is part of our tour because it's important to remember. Thank you, Robert. I was very pleased to get a request to speak about Sally Wilson, uh, who was the first black teacher in the city of New Haven. And before I can talk in detail about Sally Wilson, I must talk about the times in which she lived. As you know, and maybe you don't know, in the 1800s and prior to that, blacks were not considered worthy of going to public schools in the city of New Haven. But fortunately, there were two teachers who were of a training. I'm not sure that she went to Prudence Grandin School or not, but uh, she was one of the first blacks who taught in New Haven, and she lived on Artisan Street, not far from here. And uh, she used her home as a place to educate black kids in the city of New Haven. And she did, but she was not the only black teacher in the city of New Haven. That was Elizabeth Price, who lived in the hill section of New Haven, who was a teacher. These two teachers taught over 120 kids per day in their homes. Can you imagine teaching kids in your home, all ungraded, and just coming into your class, in your home, 20 and 30 kids at a time? Imagine what that must have been like for them, those people. So, but as time went on, the city of New Haven got religion, I, as I would say, and they realized there was something wrong. And they voted that they would accept the black kids in the public schools in New Haven. While at the same time, there was a group of about five or six white philanthropists in the city of New Haven who felt that there was something going on in the city that needs changing. So what they did, they raised funds for the Golf Street Special School. The school is located on the corner of Golf and Sperry Street in the city of New Haven. This building was used uh, to train the black kids in the city of New Haven. Uh, until around 1868, when the black laws of, New Haven, of Connecticut were changed, which allowed the black kids to go to school as it should, as all schools. But I must say that uh, part of Ms. Wilson's school was this, that she trained one particular, I wouldn't say particular, but one student that we know about today, and that's Edward Boucher. Edward Boucher lived about five blocks from the Artisan School in this neighborhood. His parents came from here, from the South, his father was a, an aide to a, a Yale student who had been, he had been slaves to that family. And Edward was a very bright young man. After he finished his time at uh, the Artisan Street School, he was accepted at Hopkins Grammar School, where he excelled and graduated there and went on to Yale, become one of the second black students accepted at Yale and graduated from there with honors. And this is a student of Miss Sally Wilson who had a school in her home. Imagine what they could have been like if they had been in a regular school, and maybe not. So uh, Edward went on to graduate school where he uh, majored in physics. He, he was one of the sixth person in the world to get a PhD in physics, a graduate of Miss Sally Wilson School. So I'm saying all this to say that uh, New Haven has really advanced since that time, and we are very pleased. I'm a graduate of Hill House High School, class of uh, 19, but uh, quite a few years ago. After graduating, three days later, I was in the Army. Now, this is about Sally Wilson, not about Ed Cherry. But uh, today, as we walk, these walk New Haven, 
I would hope that you would look at each neighborhood that you walk through and see if you find a school named after Sally Wilson or Edward Boucher or Elizabeth Price. These were the true innovators, the true heroes of education for blacks in the city of New Haven. Thank you very much.